Hello, everybody. Um, this is the second day of Symposium Air on Air. Uh, today, we have uh, three sessions. This is the last session, session three, AIR, Art in Residence Program, Affecting Change. Uh, from this morning, uh, we talk the air program, like uh, after impact of the uh, pandemic of COVID-19 from institution side and also artist side. And now we are talk about more like a, how can air program contribute the positive change in the uh, sector and beyond the in society. So um, I would like to invite uh, yeah, uh, four, four panelists this time. And then uh, we can have a five minutes brief uh, presentation at the beginning and we will have a one hour discussion all together. So first I would like to invite uh, Miss uh, Sandrina Martins uh, from France, Le uh, Carreau de Temple, the director of Le Carreau de Temple. Uh, hello, uh, Sandrina, can you hear me? Hello, bonjour. I can't hear. Okay, is it okay now? Hello, yes, thank you. Yes, hello, much. everybody. Hello, every hello. Hello, Jun. How are you? How is it Paris Fine. Now? Yes, <laughs> it's, it's early okay. morning. <laughs> Still early early morning, morning, yes, in France. Yes. yes. <laughs> but it's okay. I will start. Yes. Okay. Nice to meet you. Yep. Okay, so thank you for hello everybody and thank you for your invitation, Charlotte and Eugene. So I'll start with a, a brief presentation of Le Carreau du Temple. Uh, it's a cultural center. I don't know if you have some pictures. I think we sent some pictures of the Carreau du Temple. Well, I guess it was done, but it's okay, no matter. So it's a cultural center in the, located in the center of Paris. It was um, a former covered market uh, dating back to the end of the 19th century. It's uh, made of steel, it's uh, really beautiful. Uh, Carreau du Temps depends on the city of Paris and uh, that initiated a big renovation uh, 10 years uh, ago. So it, uh, it opened its doors uh, in 2014. And we welcome uh, around 300,000 uh, people every year. So it's really a, a huge place, 6,000 square meters in the center of Paris. So Carreau du Temple has um, two major uh, particularities. Uh, first uh, lies in the fact that uh, uh, it hosts both artistic and sports projects, not only uh, cultural uh, and artistic projects. Um, thanks to its uh, several spaces, we have a, a very large hall uh, which can host major uh, events like uh, uh, major exhibitions, uh, contemporary art fairs, uh, culinary projects and also fashion shows uh, during the Fashion Week in Paris. We have also an uh, auditorium, a 250 uh, seat auditorium. Uh, in which we program uh, contemporary uh, dance performances, uh, also film screenings and public talks on social issues. And we have um, a third main space, uh, which is uh, dedicated to sports uh, with a gymnasium, uh, a dojo, a two dance studio, a music studio. Uh, and um, on a daily basis, we welcome uh, local uh, schools, uh, and we offer the public around uh, 90 uh, different sports classes uh, every week also. So this is the first particularity, sports and art. The second particularity of the Carreau du Temple is uh, in the way it is uh, founded, founded. Almost 80% of our budget comes from our own resources, thanks to the rentals of the main hall uh, I've talked before. Um, so this uh, particular founding of the Carreau du Temple based on this mixed economy, private and public economy, uh, uh, supposes regular uh, interactions with many private companies and globally economic sector. And it has encouraged me uh, to come up with new ways of supporting contemporary artistic creation. And what, we, but what uh, really helped me in this uh, process, I 
as I, I said before, uh, was my, my experience I had during a project called Marseille Provence 2013. Uh, it was a very big event uh, in, uh, in south of France, in Marseille. Um, uh, when Marseille became the European capital of culture for the European people, maybe we, you know what it is. And so during five years, for five years with a team of four people, we set up 60 artistic residencies in private companies before 2013. And then uh, we presented all the pieces created in the process throughout the city during the year 2013. It was really a big project. And now uh, at the Carreau du Temple, uh, I'm running the Carreau du Temple for five years now. Uh, we are setting up almost uh, 10 residences every year uh, in the same kind of project uh, in a program we decided to call PACT uh, since it is in fact a pact between a company and an, art an artist. Yes, it's, thank you very much. Uh, so the artist can stay in the company facility, something like a, it's very, sounds very in, new system like a, Yes, yes, really the, the, the residencies, um, hmm. uh, they are within the company. So we, we, choose, we choose the artists uh, and we approach companies who are very uh, indicated to, to host the, the, the artistic project. Hmm. Very nice. So uh, yeah, I will maybe ask again about uh, this uh, very unique new system, but uh, now I would like to go uh, uh, second panelist, Pia Entenman, uh, Tera, eh, te Talabia Culture Academy, Gate Institute Run in Istanbul. Hello, Merhaba, uh, Pia uh, Entenman. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good morning from Istanbul to everyone. I'm especially happy to be, to be connected to Japan today because I've been to Kyoto several times um, and it's a pleasure to be invited here. Um, I even have my Japanese teacup <laughs> with me today on this special occasion. Um, so thank you very much for having uh, me. I came to Japan for the Premium Imperiale Art Prize several times. It's like the Nobel Prize of the Arts of Japan. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll have an occasion to talk about this later on as well. Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm running Tarabia Cultural Academy and I would like to take you on a quick journey to Istanbul. Um, I will try to share my screen with you um, to show you a few pictures because I'm always impressed when uh, I see the variety of existing artist residencies all over the world. Um, from tree houses to ships. We don't have a tree house, we don't have a ship either, um, but we have a beautiful building on the Bosporus shore. Um, I'm not sure if you can see my, my screen. Yes, we can see. Yes, great. Okay, so um, it's an artist residency program in Istanbul. It's about 15 kilometers away from the city center, close to the Black Sea, as you can see. Um, it is located on the summer residency of the German ambassador. Um, as you probably know, during the Ottoman Empire, Istanbul at the time, Constantinople was the capital of Turkey. And at that moment, uh, the Sultan Abdul Hamid II um, offered those premises to the um, German emperor at that time in 1880. And until now, it is the summer residency of the German ambassador. It's uh, actually very huge premises that we have. It's 18 hectares land. There is a park, there is a forest. And um, one of the historic mansions has been transformed into an artist residency in 2011. Um, thanks to a decision of um, the German Bundestag. So it was founded um, by the German parliament. Um, we have until today a political advisory board uh, representing the different political parties in Germany. They come together approximately one time per year and we report about our activities um, in this advisory board. And then we have a uh, independent jury selecting the artists. We select the artists based on an open call system since 2017. Before that, uh, we had a nomination process um, 
and we select about 20 artists every year. Then there is, of course, the team of Tarabia Cultural Academy. It's a mixed team of employees from both uh, the German Embassy in Ankara and the Goethe Institute in Istanbul. The residency is run by the German Embassy and the curatorial responsibility, all the artistic activities lie with the Goethe Institute. Um, it's uh, supposed to be a safe heaven far from the city hustle. Here you can see one of the apartments. <clears throat> we have studios. Um, but at the same time, it's also supposed to be not only uh, a contemplative space for the artist, but also um, a space for exchange. Um, so we invite a lot of people from the Turkish art scene uh, And of course, <clears throat> we're also um, this year was an exhibition we did this summer um, in cooperation with Depo Art Space in Istanbul that is run by Anadolu Culture. Um, and it was an exhibition curated by one of our, our alumni, Ayat Najafi, together with Turkish artists. Um, during the pandemic, we could luckily also use our beautiful space physically from time to time. Um, this was <laughs> artist Mechta Baidu, and it was an analog for digital year. And we were happy to, to host that performance in Tarabia. Um, I think I will stop here. And it's really about creating um, a, a hub for individuals um, to create a space for artistic freedom. Um, it's supposed to full civil society. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pia. We had a little bit unstable internet condition, but I think it seems okay right now. Thank you very much. Very interesting presentation. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, okay, sorry. Uh, um, so I would like to invite now uh, Mr. Kuroda Daisuke, uh, from, director from Tsushima Art Fantasia. Hello, Mr. Kuroda, can you hear me? Hello, nice to meet you. Yes, no problem. えっと、ちょっと待ってくださいね。はい。あの、大制作をして毎年夏にあの、え、制作して展示するっていう
、でえっと、これはあの、うん、なんだろう、対馬アドバンタージャの特徴は、えっとまあ、2011年にあの行政が主体、対馬市が主体になって、えっとまあ、あるギャラリーとかのなんていうコーディネートチームと。Had some problems the three years. The artists that were involved in the、uh, tried to r e a c h the community. They transferred this uh, as a, an uh, air residence.、Uh, this is the 10th year because of. We were one. Did a p o r t n e c k residence is by decreasing the have isolation period in the middle and far away, and we don't have a staff. This medical system and support, so we are in debt. So we asked、uh, the residents to stay in, in a bigger city in Nagasaki beforehand before we come to the island for two weeks. And we asked them to fly over after that, after two weeks, when we found that they are okay. And we accept about three or four residents at that time. Next summer. Next year, we are planning on having an exhibition. Pictures and slides I have here. I don't know. I, I, so, for some reason, I can't share my slide. I'm sorry. I, Yes,、um, we have、uh, actually a link on the chat window.、Uh, we can click the link to jump to the Tsushima Art Fantasia. Maybe we can see the t i t for your presentation. And then、uh, I'd like to introduce the last panelist, Heidi Vogels, Vogels Heidi, Heidi uh, from uh, uh, Dutch culture, trans artists from Netherlands. Hello, Heidi. Hey. Can you hear me?、Hi. Hello. Hi, how are you?、Fine. Very good. I heard you had a,、um, know you had a conference yesterday. Yes. With trans artists.、Mm -hmm. I'm very curious about the, the outcome. Yes.、Um, yes. If you can briefly introduce about your institution and then trans artists,、uh, yeah, that's the biggest AR network. So,、mm. if you can present. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, first of all, also for the invitation. And exactly, it's true, we just finished the symposium. It was、uh, last week, two days. And my head is actually still bubbling with all the intensive discussions and subjects that came to the table.、Um, uh, that's also why I'm Glad immediately we have this symposium here that you organized here, it, well, with you there in Kyoto. And、um, as our symposium was more about care, and I think this connecting with each other, right, through these online meetings and gatherings, that's very much、uh, a big uh, th um, moment or action of care for each other as well. So that's really great.、Uh, to introduce myself, yes, I work for trans artists and in spite of Dutch culture. That's an organization for international collaboration in the arts, and it's based here in Amsterdam in the Netherlands.、Um, trans art is for those who do not know yet what it is. You can also check、uh, in the web link that is now in the chat. We are a website, like a platform, to inform artists about the possibilities of artist in residency programs. And we do that to、um, basically, our website is a huge online database. And consists of, at the moment of around 1,500 residency programs worldwide. So,、um, adding to that, it is,、uh, I think, always good to keep in mind 
the enormous variety of the spectrum of artists and residency organizations and programs. So we have the really small initiatives that um, uh, are organized by artists, for example, that are really um, um, derived from a very context situation. And you have like the big institutions that function almost like career stepping stones. And in between, there are so many different variations and different reasons why to set up a residency program. And in that sense, also for artists, why would they go there? Because it's always about finding the right match. Then um, in the Netherlands, we have around 50 air programs. And um, we have, of course, the, the more known institutions like the Rijksakademie in Amsterdam, the Ateliers in Amsterdam, and we have the Jan van Eyck in Maastricht. And but most of the residencies in the Netherlands consist of these really small independent and context related programs. Um, there is, uh, you can also, maybe you heard of it as well, the European Ceramic Work Center in Oostenrijk. So this is an example how residencies sometimes are completely focused on technical facilities and then to, uh, for artists to use those. But you also have like um, the Fabriek in Eindhoven, who is an artist run space, and they are completely built around this huge hall that allow artists to work in a different scale. And um, that's, so that's the main focus of their program. Also, the financial situation can be very different, of course. Sometimes artists can receive a fee. Sometimes they choose to invest themselves and contribute uh, in the basic cost for rent. So um, there are many. It's always about context and it's always about um, uh, how do you uh, create a meaningful uh, situation uh, as the organizers and for the artists, how to choose. So from that situation, trans artists already back in 2003, decided we want to also support the residencies in the Netherlands. And that, that come I, uh, that's my job, basically. I'm coordinating a network of residencies in the Netherlands. And that consists of uh, organizing meetings to bringing them together and to generate contacts with their colleagues in other countries. And so the program of last week was also part of that. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much for your presentation. Really, like a, um, air program, artists in residence program is like a culture now. Um, it's really bloomed in early 2000s or maybe later half of the 1990s. There was, of course, there's a studio or place to stay and create something, but the really air network bloomed with the development of the internet culture, I guess. Yeah, um, I would like to come back to Sandorina um, because the, the, the effort of Carol de Temple like a, or like a uh, Marseille, uh, that's really interesting. Like an artist stay in the company facility. Mm -hmm. And so I just imagine the main audience could be like a company employees or like a, how does it affect like a company people okay. and artists? <clears throat> okay, well, it's one of the objectives of, the, of this uh, program pact. Uh, is really to, to develop audiences. Uh, you know, in France, we have a, a very large network of cultural facilities. <laughs> and yet, uh, despite uh, this presence throughout the country, it is clear that some audiences still do not go to cultural venues. And given that people spend 40% of their life at work, <laughs> so there is a major challenge in bringing culture in the hurt of the workplace, with, uh, which is usually uh, inaccessible. And it seemed important to me to see how, uh, through this project, we could offer company employees the opportunity to, to live um, um, a privileged and unique uh, experience by witnessing an artistic creation in the making. Well, that's it was really uh, one of the, of the objective. And um, what I can say also is that um, what counts um, is the creation of um, social bounds within the company around the artist. Um, when an artist uh, works uh, in a company, a human relationship uh, is established between the artist and the employees. 
a project that came from the top, really from the management of the direction of the, the company will finally find its place and meaning when employees uh, find themselves more involved than uh, managers. And um, after a few days of uh, residence, uh, a, a residency, can, a residence um, can't be too short. Okay, time factor is very essential. Um, and after a few days, employees are the ones who want to help the artist uh, to succeed in their project. They will do everything, and we can observe that. They will do everything to support him or her because it becomes meaningful and meaningful and very important to, to them. And for me, <clears throat> um, the presence of the artist uh, breaks the fantasy and the cliche uh, around the figure of the artist. And uh, it, this is precisely what will uh, lead employees uh, in a process of understanding the stakes of contemporary artistic creation. And that's why we are really developing this project to, to break uh, some cliche and to, to, to permit these employees to, to understand contemporary art creation. Yeah. Long time ago, yes, that's true. Like uh, the master artist makes something and the audience come to see just like, a, like a one side just show and the other side just receive. But this kind of relationship is really changed. We had a big discussion from maybe 1960s, like a public art, site specific art, relational art. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, uh, can I come back to uh, Pia? Um, e locating in Istanbul, what is your, um, if I can say, main audience or like a main purpose or like, a, uh, do you have, do you receive a lot of local people like a, gather with a, mingle with a German artist or what type of a project? Yes, I mean, I would say we have two um, main target groups. First of all, of course, our artists in residency themselves. Um, uh, we address Germany-based artists, not necessarily German artists. We don't control passports, <laughs> but the contemporary German art scene for us consists of many, many nationalities. Um, that is very important to us, first of all. Then uh, we opened up this year, and I'm very happy about this, um, to invite also Turkish artists in the, in the residency, um, if they apply together with the Germany-based artists to work on a common project. Um, and we're very happy that we found a, a sponsor, Allianz uh, Cultural Foundation, to make this possible. Um, and actually, we had more than 100 applications for only three places that we can offer um, for this kind of program. Um, as you can imagine, um, the economic situation and this, the situation of the civil society in Turkey is under a lot of pressure. And I think that therefore this is a very precious um, new project. Um, in general, um, of course, our second main uh, audience is the Turkish art scene. So as I, as I said previously, um, we're not supposed to be an isolated island. As you saw, it's a beautiful space, but we really try to connect the artists to the Turkish scene and the Turkish artists also expect that from us and are very happy to either come to Tarabia or to collaborate um, in the frame of exhibitions, concerts, um, theater plays, etc. with their own premises in Istanbul but also in Turkey. So we, we focus mainly on Istanbul institutions and art scene but sometimes we also go to the social so-called periphery and uh, work also with smaller cities. Next year, for example, we're planning a big um, exhibition um, with Odun Pasare Museum in Eskishe here. It's a small town. It's a wonderful new museum, museum actually um, by, uh, built by a Japanese architect. <laughs> um, yeah, and so those are our two main um, target groups. And maybe um, one last um, sentence. I mean, the um, Turkish-German relations are, of course, very special. I don't know if you, if I should elaborate a little bit on that as well, if that's interesting for everyone. What do you think? I think it, it would be nice, actually. I know there's a big uh, Turkish immigrants in, in Germany. 
Exactly, can, exactly. So yes, I think we have yes. a very special role um, in this tense situation, political situation between the two countries, because there is a huge uh, Turkish community living in, in, in Germany, as you know, approximately um, three million people with Turkish biographies are based in Germany. Um, because of the recruitment agreement in the 70s. Um, and then at the same time, um, during the world, um, Second World War, um, German intellectuals um, were given um, asylum in uh, Turkey. Um, for example, Ernst Reuter and Paul Hindemith, as you might have heard. So there is this relation um, as well. And third, uh, Turkey is a EU neighboring country and um, Goethe Institute also um, considers itself as a European cultural institute. Um, Turkey has been a candidate for a EU accession um, since 2005 officially. Of course, there is a lot of problems, but nevertheless, we are also trying to contribute to this on the cultural level. Thank you very much. Yes, it's very interesting. And uh, Mr. Daisuke Kuroda-san, um, also your residence from like a Tsushima Art Fantasia is located in between two nations, Korea and Japan. And um, uh, do you receive a lot of Korean artists or do you have also international artists to, could you explain a little bit more about Personally, so we invited South Korean artists only. Then, connection among artists has been established, and uh, we travel to and from South Korea and Japan. Then, Gradually, uh, we have really started to receive China, uh, artists from China or Germany. And recently, we received artists from Hong Kong. So how do you... So, sorry, uh, we didn't receive uh, artists from Hong Kong, but we had contact from Kong, Hong, Hong Kong to know more about our activities. But going forward, we like to open to uh, artists from different countries, many different countries. Yes, thank you very much. I just like to add a comment or a question uh, for uh, Kuroda-san. How does he, how does you, how do you see um, the function between the, the Tushima advantage function between Korea and Japan? Our purpose is that we like to make full use of geographical conditions of our AIR. And uh, South Korea and Japan has had very long history and relationship from ancient times. So we like to revive such good communications or relationship and not only about South Korea but East Asia as a whole, we like to be a hub of art in East Asia countries. We like to invite uh, artists from East Asian countries widely and uh, we like to make use of the long lasting history among us to develop furthermore. I believe that the relationship among artists and the relationship between artists and local community is very good. However, unfortunately, political situation is not so good. And last year, so because of political reasons, tourists from the number of tourists from South Korea dropped sharply due to political reason. I'm very surprised. So actually, 
when we think about intimacy, actual intimacy between uh, a part of our relationship with artists, I was really surprised. Each other, like um, we can talk, discuss each other. That's more, I think, interesting. But uh, how about uh, Heidi? I think you see a lot of different residence programs from like a, a institution, like a big institution level to like a micro residence style. And of course you said like a, uh, some residence is uh, specified for the technique or material and the other is more aimed to make a be the right uh, nation relationship or so many unique residence program. And do you see like uh, uh, effects like a very functional effects in society from your experience? Hello? Oh, I can't hear. I can't hear Heidi. Heidi, like, hello? Oh, I can I cannot hear. Okay, I'm sorry. Maybe uh, there is a technical problem. I can't hear Heidi. So may I ask uh, Mr. Kroda again? Uh, because the kind of regional art festival, like a. Uh, um, Regional site specific art festivals are kind of bloomed in Japan, like uh, from almost a decade. Like uh, we have a lot of regional art festivals. If you have any, uh, if you can describe uh, this Japanese situation to share with everybody. Uh, my thoughts about Tsushima art. Fantasia is not only art, but the Japanese mindset about history is very low, or they are not sensitive to discrimination so much. So there are many people who haven't been to Japan, uh, other countries. This is, would be a part of the reason I believe that, but generally speaking, so there we have like a, a we tend to uh, categorize people like a, they are foreign people or we are Japanese or there is a kind of border between between Japanese and uh, foreign people. But I think that uh, we like to uh, focus the enhancement of good relationship more and more. Um, result between Germany and uh, Turkey, people more understand each other through art projects or cultural efforts. Pia? Yes, I think I didn't hear the beginning of oh. your question. Okay. Uh, Could you sum it up again for sure. me? Thank uh, you. Mr. Kuroda is saying like uh, uh, the, there is a kind of um, effect start happen like a grassroots level, but uh, Korea and Japan, sometimes we have uh, uh, like a nation level, we have difficulty sometimes to get along with. So, uh, but uh, through art or like uh, through air program, uh, there is a kind of a, uh, understanding in the grassroots level. Do you see uh, the, uh, from 2017, you said like it's more like a application system you employed. 
And then many people, many artists who are interested in Turkey, maybe come and stay in your place. And do you have a, um, any specific uh, interesting experience, something change through the art pro uh, residency program? I mean, uh, due to the open call system, I would say that um, we have a broader variety of artists. I mean, we have all disciplines in Tarabia, um, uh, musicians, filmmakers, um, authors, etc. cetera. Um, but the variety concerning the artistic experience changed um, concerning the artists coming from Germany. So we have more upcoming artists, but also very experienced artists. And I think this mixture is actually uh, very fruitful. Um, and I think it also has an influence when it comes to the connection with the Turkish art scene, because um, we're addressing um, so many different um, target groups from universities um, to schools. There are sometimes artists who love to do workshops um, with schools. Um, we, we were now working with a festival that is dealing especially with handicapped kids. Um, but then also we work um, with big museums, as I mentioned before. So it's really this uh, variety from grassroots to bigger art institutions. Um, and um, I would like to cite actually one, one uh, author who stayed with us, Matthias Göritz. He, he once said, uh, I will read that out, <laughs> for artists it's crucial to compare their vision of the world with that of others, um, pointing out that residencies are a process with bi-directional effects. And that's why we also offer, first of all, those co-production funding possibilities with Turkish artists, um, so that um, the artists are not only guests here presenting their work, but really creating something Thing together. Um, and I would go even further and say it's not only bi-directional effects, but maybe even multi-directional effects. As I said, we have artists from Hong Kong, from um, Iran, from so many countries based in Germany, having a, an experience in Germany, then coming to Turkey. Um, and I think that this is uh, very fruitful. Yeah. Was that an answer to your question. That's very nice, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, do you program like kind of the workshop or these kind of effort is from artists always or do you program something? How have you been creating a communication between artists or people in the community um, apart from exhibitions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I would say it's both. It's both um, the artists who, who uh, there are, of course, artists who are very active, going out all the time, meeting a lot of people, maybe they had already had connections to Turkey. And then there is the frame that we as an institution are giving. First of all, and that's very important, <laughs> our frame is a very free one. So the artists come here, it's not a project based residency, but it's a, an open residency, they can do what whatever they want. They have to apply with a motivation and it has to be clear to us why they want to come to Turkey, but they don't have to apply with a project. And I think that this freedom is crucial for their works. And in the end, there is almost always an outcome um, because then, and I, I mentioned this frame, we are offering different programs. Um, I mentioned the Tarabia Tuesday. It's the Tuesday when we as a team meet with the residents and sometimes invite um, people from the Turkish art scene based on a certain topic. So if, for example, there is a new law um, concerning new kinds of censorship uh, in the film sector, we might invite somebody from the film scene, etc. always depending on the interests of uh, the residents, of course. Then we have that new speed dating event. We started with it last year. And I think that is um, a very effective tool actually to connect um, the artists with people in Istanbul who are really interesting for them because we select beforehand who we are gonna invite based on the projects they uh, the residents want to work on. Um, and then we match them. They have seven minutes each uh, to, to have a chat. And then um, they can, of course, uh, continue this dialogue individually in the future without our help. But we're giving like a kind of starting help with this uh, speed dating event. Um, and then um, I, I mentioned the festival that we're doing in Tarabia one time per year. As you can imagine, um, the summer residency of the ambassador is a very like 
closed place. <laughs> it's not so easily accessible. Um, and therefore, we can only do this one time per year. But this is really the moment when we invite our partners and our friends from Istanbul to our premises to open studios, uh, concert, open air cinema, etc. Um, yeah, so those are the tools um, yeah. to connect yeah. with the Turkey. Thank you very much. Yes, very interesting. Um, yeah, so uh, I think uh, Heidi, do you hear, can you hear me? Yes, and uh, Heidi, I think you see a lot of different cases since you were working in uh, this residence network. Um, yeah, do you have any comments or like uh, this? Um, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, fantastic. Good. Um, what was again your original question, Yoon? Uh, like, uh, did you see some effective result outcomes uh, through the artist residence program mm. change of society? Effective change, yes. Mm, this mm, is our topic, actually. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what I was immediately thinking of is that there are so many answers to that question because I think on so many levels there are changes, but they're not always visible. Uh, as like an object or as like a very tangible uh, situation that comes out because uh, residencies, of course, when you have programs that are, are focused on community, we take the town as the venue, for example, and there the, the results are very clear. The projects with the community take place and the results maybe um, come about as an installation or, or an exhibition, but often they are ephemeral, like in... Um, uh, encounters and events that took place and that will remain in the people's memory and thoughts so that is also something i think that is something that really lasts but that it's hard to um to to make clear to people from the outside another point is also that as a fact that residencies um open up spaces for art and to protect those spaces where art can take place with artists and with audiences with other artists and so on where all different kinds of encounters can take place i think is already amazingly valuable uh, as a fact that it exists in these um, very um, product driven society right that we are in and uh, also the, uh, for artists to go into residencies also often means to go inside of an artistic process. It means like an artistic development. A residency is often like a pressure cooker. So it's also um, things that you don't see from the outside, but for artists often it's also a moment to reconnect with their practice, to see what is working. Maybe something is not working. You get lost. Uh, it is not so nice, but because you are inside of this time frame and you are outside of your own environment, there is much more concentration and focus. And these, uh, these kind of uh, processes, they speed up amazingly and uh, they are amazingly valuable and they will also travel with you um, the, come, the next 10 years of your practice and they will influence you and you make different choices and also like relationships that are evolved, friendships that take place in residencies, they often also stay with you as artists and they might even result in new collaborations or you return to that place or you invite other people to come to your place again. So there's many uh, directions that outcomes of residencies are uh, driven, I think. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. How about uh, Sandrina? Um, how was the business model? Uh, not the business model, but the, the artists stay in the company, and then these maybe employees are not really. Uh, some some part of people don't go really cultural institution, but it, because of it, if it is their office, they directly face directly meet artists, and then. Do you see uh, something interesting effects? Yes, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> indeed, yes. Uh, that's um, that's one of the objective of the of the program. Um, during Marseille Provence uh, uh, twenty and fourteen and thirteen, we 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 observed that employees uh, could uh, after. Uh, after this uh, experience, they, they could really uh, better uh, um, 
understand uh, the stakes of contemporary art. But what, what I I wanted to say is um, um, that one of the main objectives well of um, of PACT program is um, to to explore the the world of work that is uh, undergoing uh, total change now. <laughs> Um, well, uh, we can say that uh, since the, the early 2000s, uh, the digital revolution has uh, changed our lives. And I'm, I'm a German uh, sociologist and philosopher, um, Artmut Rosa, uh, has uh, very clearly identified the new constraints on humans and uh, uh, which is the acceleration of time uh, that creates a new form of alienation. And so everything goes very quickly, uh, too fast. And we hardly have time to adapt to a new technology when uh, a new one appears. And software, smartphones, computers, uh, everything is quickly changing. And the human mind uh, has to make a con considerable uh, effort to be able con to constantly adapt and uh, one, no wonder uh, some people uh, decide to say stop uh, I can't cope uh, anymore and we can see with the the, the pandemic uh, crisis uh, uh, now that um, it's very complicated for for human people really to to adapt and um, uh, so this mutation is a uh, one of the many changes uh, that are happening in the world, we could as well mention issues such as uh, climate change or the wider or the rise of uh, extremism. And um, so, in 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 the world of work, um, all that is uh, also changing. So companies are trying to to take up the challenges, all these challenges, by creating, for example, spaces for well-being at work as we can observe that, uh, by changing habits for more um, eco-responsibility also, by appointing uh, ethic, uh, ethics uh, officers. And um, I find it very fascinating um, that artists are also witnessing these transformations and um, they are, in, and they are inspired by, by them in their works. That's really the aim, one of the, our goals uh, in, uh, in this project. And um, so I do believe that um, um, these kind of projects really in the society, in the, in the, in the workplace, uh, can uh, contribute to change um, in a very unique and positive, positive way to, to understand what is uh, undergoing change. Yeah. Um, I think you organized also the Biennale to show the result of the residence program. Was it your plan? Was it your strategy to, to, to show the outcome in the society? Exactly, yes. It was, uh, it was very important for, for us to, to, to show all the, the art pieces uh, uh, pro produced in, within the company. It's important for the, for the artists because they, they need to, to share uh, their experience and to show their work, but it's all also very important for the employees uh, because they, uh, they ask their family and their familia, also their friends, to come to the exhibition and to see the, the projects that they were uh, involved to in. And, um, and uh, for the, the companies also, um, you know, when we ask for the companies to, um, to, to participate to the, this project. In the, in the first uh, times, uh, they are um, um, a little bit uh, uh, scared with that project. So when Owen hosting an artist uh, within the company, it's not things, something very simple. And then with the Biennale, um, uh, we are able to present uh, all the pieces and to, to share all together uh, what uh, what was uh, um, what happened uh, during uh, all these uh, experiences, and it's very 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 important uh, to to share all these projects, and um, and we we observe that um, employees and companies 
uh, um, do uh, understand all, all the projects because they were involved uh, into into these projects. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. The previous session from with the artists, um, Sam was saying like, a, yeah, it's quite a good time to study again or like a, to uh, to sum up what they were doing before. And so the artists are uh, adjusting like uh, the, this new uh, pandemic situation, this our new social situation. But from institutional level, um, uh, for example, do you organize some kind of online efforts? Like uh, uh, what do you think? I want to ask to everybody, um, what do you think about online residence program or online activities? Do you want me to start? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. please. Yeah. okay, thank you, um, June. Um, well, so um, uh, of course, uh, with the lockdown, uh, all the residences uh, have been uh, suspended, and it's uh, it's very it's very difficult for us to to accept that. And for the artists, of course, it's uh, it's something very uh, very difficult. But um, uh, for me. Um, uh, it's impossible to uh, to to move uh, this project from an online project. Um, um, I I do not believe uh, it is possible for the artist to 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 yes to to have a to make a residence uh, an online residence. Um, um, I, I I do believe it's the human relation. Uh, uh, is uh, really really important. Well, I think with the, with this crisis, we uh, we know that it is possible to to uh, like this symposium. Uh, we can talk to, together uh, all around the world, and I think it's a very positive uh, uh, consequence uh, of uh, this crisis and this pandemic crisis. But uh, for the artistic project, for the residences, uh, I I really believe that it's. Uh, uh, important to to be really in in the place yes thank you very much others any comments or yes maybe maybe a yes. comment actually i agree with uh, sandrina i think digital residencies are a nice add-on and maybe they exist for their own sake. There are some residency programs doing it very well, like, for example, Akademie Schloss Solitude in, in Stuttgart. I think they set up a great digital residency. You should definitely check that out. Um, but I also think that it cannot replace the physical contact that artist residencies uh, are based on, especially in a country like Turkey, where the civil society is under a lot of pressure. And I think that residency programs, physical residency programs have their value because the artists stay for a longer period of time. They can connect with local artists, build up trust, and they might not talk to each other about political topics, for example, the first day. Um, therefore, I think the physical contact is so important. And uh, I also think that we, we talk more openly if we meet each other in person and not on a digital ne level. Nevertheless, um, as Sandrina said, yes, it's wonderful that we can all meet here. And I think this is really something that we should keep also after the pandemic. And we also, for example, set up um, a digital program for our alumni. So our alumni, because they also, of course, suffered from the financial uh, situation due to Corona um, could apply for funding for digital projects. And we have, for example, two um, artists, um, Asle Serbest and Mona Mahal, two architects who built up a digital model of Tarabia Cultural Academy in a very abstract way. So they kept a few parts, but also changed a few parts. They did it with an open source software from Mozilla. Um, as soon as it's online, I, will, I can also share it with you. Um, so um, they can also use this uh, new model as a, as a venue, a digital venue for events. And it makes our very like elitist place accessible to a broader and digital audience. So I think there is an advantage to those digital programs, but they cannot replace uh, physical contacts and residencies. Yes, very interesting. Um, I used to live in South Korea actually, uh, it was very already a decade of uh, like a 10 years ago and then um, that time 
uh, we had a lot of cliche or stereotype or so many information I, I, I received. But actually when I went there, everything changed. One experience changed. I have a more like human level reality. Like uh, I see, uh, I talk and yeah, it's the same thing happened. I, I went to different places, but always the experience, one experience changed entirely your idea. So uh, how about Mr. Uh, Kuroda-san? Do you have any comments? Yes. In the midst of the pandemic, I have been thinking about what kind of countermeasures we can have in terms of artists in residence. Artists in residence puts focus on human uh, interactions and where we go. However, in the middle of that, we have to think whether we can have online projects or museums um, might think about how to view uh, art projects online. I myself is an artist. So how I, what came to my mind is that, for example, in a public uh, structure, it is very difficult to take risks and try to uh, carry out certain things in the in the pandemic era but artist has more freedom it's i'm not saying that we have to take risks but we can maybe quietly move or we can go to places where nobody is there so i don't know how to say it but we can we do need to have uh, face to face interactions but we also have something that could replace that, you know. So if it's an industry or something systematic, uh, it might be hard, but I think it's quite difficult to, you know, from the artist's point of view, you can go there, you can make something, we can think about things directly so we have to maybe distinguish between structural, systemic way versus artist point of view. Effects of uh, the the pandemic, like uh, since we don't move a lot anymore, uh, CO two, yes, is really reduced. We were discussing this environmental issue like a uh, green gas and uh, um, yeah, global warming, but then everybody thought it is impossible to stop this Korean economy society, but now stopped. It happened, it could happen. It's unfortunately happening, but the, um, the, if you wanted to deduce the CO2, look at now, there's so many effects. And um, yeah, so the mobility. So, okay, if the one substance start to move a lot, of course it makes heat. If we think like a human is like a bacteria on the surface of the earth, if we start to move a lot, of course it makes heat and it damages the environment. But now we are kind of slow down, a bit congelated, then like a heat is reduced. So, but of course we want to continue again the air program, like the, the physical experience, like a meeting face to face. This is, we can't stop. Of course, this is a reality, like a, we need experience, not only the information. So, but then if we start open again, after the pandemic, we may have, yeah, I told you like a, to maybe uh, COVID-22 will happen, COVID-25 or COVID-30 or new models coming. So um, we don't know, but uh, at least we are wishing to open again. So what can be the next standard do, do you think it, there will be kind of elitism happen again? Like how do you select artists who can move? How institution can choice artists? This person is okay to move. Okay, we now start to have a kind of business trip, but not fun trip yet. But where is the border that, okay, this person can go, but this person cannot. Do, 
do you think it, is there a kind of a, sorry, maybe I asked too much, but yes, please, Pia. Yes, I mean, I don't have a have an answer to your very broad question. I think that we're all dealing with right now. Um, just one remark. I think that artist residencies are the most sustainable form of physical exchange. Of course, we need to take planes um, in order to make them possible. But I think it's it, it's much more sustainable than, for example, inviting artists for just one cinema evening or for just one exhibition of with a duration of one week. Um, artist residencies take usually at least some weeks or a few months, sometimes even a year. And I think that therefore there is a justification <clears throat> to take flights if we don't agree that flights shouldn't take place at all anymore. Yes, thank you. Uh, Heidi, yes. Heidi, please. Hi. Um... Yeah, of course, it is an impossible question, but a very rightful one. Um, I can contribute that um, from the point of um, trans artists, we always stress to artists, you don't have to go on a residency. You know, it is, it is not like a must. Always think really well, why do you want to go somewhere? Is it necessary? What do you want to um, find there? What is important for you, for your development in your career? for your artistic development that you have to go to this place. And another thing is that um, it can also be very interesting to just move to another city for a month in your own country or to a neighboring country and to have much more exchanges with uh, people close by that you didn't know yet to connect to their professional networks and to make them more sustainable because um, Going to residency to the other side of the world is fantastic and you will learn a lot and it will be an amazing experience, but it will be very unlikely to maintain that uh, relationship or that to build further on that uh, um, project uh, over more years, for example, just because it's so expensive or also not very ethical to um, keep flying up and down all the time. So I, I wish it will also give us more compass to, um, to develop a more regional focus and to strengthen the communities between or networks and circuits of relationships that, that are actually also very close by and can be very interesting. Yes, thank you very much. Do you have uh, other comments for this after pandemic? Yes, maybe uh, direction maybe will be kind of on and off, like online and uh, offline mixed. So like, uh, we're going to see the, the balance probably. Yeah. And so may I come back to Sandrina? Uh, what is your next plan? It's so difficult to think probably, but the next effort, do you? Imagine something in the year 21. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, well, I'm, I don't feel um, really um, um, uh, totally concerned by the, the question of uh, international uh, uh, movings because the uh, artists in the, in the framework of the program, of the PAC program, um, uh, are French. It's a national program for the moment. And uh, we, we wanted to, to, to develop uh, the international um, uh, programmation, but for, for the moment, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to, to say that. Well, so um, I don't know, we are still um, talking, trying to, 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 to talk with companies, but the, um, the times are, are very hard for the artists, but also for, for private companies. Um, they have, uh, well, they have no, no more budgets for anything. Um, and well, uh, it's, uh, once the crisis is over, um, we'll find out whether the companies still have the financial means to, to put into these projects. Um, given that we know that the companies will uh, considerably reduce their superfluous, what they say, they, they call this superfluous budget, uh, 
uh, which are their communication and the, all the parties and all that. And of course, projects on, as a pact um, uh, depend on that uh, communication uh, project of the companies. So um, it's very hard for me to, to answer. Why? We'll try. Mm. Yes, that's a hard question. So, um, Mr. Krulasan, do you have a further plan toward the next year? What do you design for? Yes, from me, it depends on what kind of situations it will be. But I feel like we want to have a residence in a more, you know, separate island in a rural area. So we shouldn't have too many people together. Once you, people get here, we are in nature, so you and you don't encounter many people. So I want to continue my uh, era in that way. But I'm just going to go back a little bit, but the characteristics about our uh, air is we i told you we don't come directly to our island they first land in a city in nagasaki and they uh, the residents stay a little bit there it's like half self isolation so they have a kind of extra residence experience there so before they come to us, there is another you know, hub or intermediate cities where they can stay and experience extra residence. So that will beef up their uh, experiences and opportunities. And on top of that, we can you know, have uh, safety and health issues um, solved in that way. Is there an alternative to air as are we now? Uh, could they be uh, prolonged uh, change to neighborhood programs? Should artists travel uh, Greta Thunberg uh, across the Atlantic? To, uh, so this Greta Thunberg, sorry, my pronunciation, I don't know if, if I'm correct. Uh, so, uh, so the person, uh, the young environmental activist. Do you have uh, any comment on, no? We, we, didn't, I, I, we didn't hear the, the beginning of the question. Okay, uh, this uh, young artist, uh, so like environmental activist, she uh, across uh, the, the Atlantic Ocean by ship. So uh, there was a, a question from audience. Is there an alternative to art, uh, air, as, uh, as, as we are now? Could they prolong? In any case, I know that there is a container ship offering residencies. Oh, I can I... try to find a picture in the meantime. <laughs> it, was, it was quite long ago, isn't it? Like a cargo ship open yeah like from from new york or i don't remember but organization based in new york or... from canada i think canada okay it was yeah. very unique yeah activity. yeah yes yeah uh, if if i can uh, contribute to the question i think what you could also um um uh, conclude from that question concerning this activism not to travel at all anymore is that we could also use this time that we cannot move for further introspection to really consider what are our methodologies and what can we actually improve um, before the world is opening up again mm. and how can we do things actually differently and how can we invest better in um, um, in these local communities and how to do that and how to do that consistently and how to build relationships for a longer future, right? And I think this is um, part of a process that is not something that you can have easy answers to, but it also has to do with deconstructing the models or the, the institutions as we have them right now. And I think that 
that could be really valuable to to look more into together and to create maybe also more like um, working groups between residencies or with each other. Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, I'd like to change a bit topic that how many symposiums do you have uh, often like exchange information with different institutions? Like, uh, of course, Heidi was uh, organizing conference, so you, you could uh, meet uh, different organizers or directors, but do you have a kind of a horizontal network like a uh, uh, Getty Institute have exchange information through the Getty Institute network? Yes, um, there is, um, is an exchange between the Germany-based residency programs and Germany organizing residencies uh, abroad. Um, and Goethe Institute is represented in this and are also organizing it. Um, and then we now actually, uh, thanks to Corona, we started to have an exchange between the three big residency programs of Goethe Institute in the last months. There is, of course, Villa Kamogawa, there is Villa Sul in Salvador de Bahia, and um, our residency in Istanbul. And it's very fruitful to have that exchange, because, of course, we have the same questions and the same doubts, um, and at the same time, different perspectives on those questions. So um, that is very helpful. Yeah. Do you have, a, like, a other network uh, okay i will ask to uh, sandrina uh, do you uh, exchange point of view with the different residence programs or cultural institutions do you have an opportunity to make a conference or a symposium often yes and <laughs> we 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 were a partner um, of um um, a symposium in Paris uh, two months ago, um, out in residences, uh, and this uh, symposium um, uh, what the uh, what the place um, how shall I put it um, uh, permitted to to present um, uh, residences programs uh, uh, throughout the throughout. Um, the country, and uh, it uh, the uh, French Institute was also partner uh, with uh, this uh, uh, symposium. So we are connecting uh, with uh, uh, other places, uh, other artistic programs of uh, residences, um, but we we also share um, uh, with the. Uh, with other, uh, other uh, similar initiatives uh, as a packed program, because we are not the only one. Uh, the Ministry of Culture um, developed, uh, also developed a program of uh, uh, residences in, uh, in companies in, uh, in France. So uh, it's uh, something um, uh, which is increasing now in, in France, this question of, uh, uh, making connections with the uh, private sector. Yes. Yeah, so this online thing seems, uh, the network is really, so the online things are a bit temporary measure and then the DR meeting, we are, we are really wishing to come back again. Like, uh, yes. Uh, do you, uh, Mr. Kurdasan, do you exchange a lot? through online symposium or conference, do you see some residence? So this well online I myself I don't host it online residence. The online symposium or online talk. So compared with pre-COVID-19, the number of such online things have been increasing. But rather than symposium, but very informal meeting or gathering with artists, we, are, uh, we have had, or maybe we've had consultation meeting. So uh, our Fantasia uh, is run by artists. 
So it would be hard for us to find a new partner other than artist. May I ask you, Heidi, uh, the elaborate on the construction of a model of uh, air, the artist in residence program? Yes. Um, it is, it is a complicated thing, but it was, um, I think, on the table a lot in our program the last week. And um, we focus in our program on the residency model as a, um, a relational, uh, relational structure, right? So as Miriam Wistreich of Hotel Marie Capel already explained earlier in your program today, I think, about care and how we deal with each other about um, the meaning of labor, uh, the invisibility of labor, mostly of residency organizers. But what came um, to, to the fore in our program is that through different case studies, uh, different people approached this from different angles. So we touched upon um, subjects like air and decolonialism, or maybe also how do air actually relate to colonialism? How can we, if we take it from that perspective, what kind of questions, what kind of situations, what kind of experiences of artists who are not happy maybe when they have done an air, how can you think about that? And how can you then look again to your own program and to make changes or to be more aware? Because a lot is about um, re um, unpacking these, these subjects and also, um, re looking again, uh, thinking again, and um, then also acting differently. How could you do that? So it's a question of imagining that, but especially about consciousness. And it's not always nice, right? Because these questions can also be very painful um, because um, you talk about structures of care, but it doesn't mean that everybody is cared for. Um, we assume how, to we, how we deal and how we relate with each other because it always has been done like that, or this is how we were raised. But maybe it could also be done differently. And um, this is, I think, a very essential process and uncomfortable sometimes. And, um, and these topics, they come to the table and they are more like invitations also to take it further in diff maybe more safe environments, enclosed environments to, in, with people together, not always on public platforms. Um, so I think this, this is part of this ongoing process. And maybe I can also give you an example. We had also two artists in our program who we asked to think about these questions. And they, um, they gave us a 10 minute video about the conversation they had together. These are the artists, Sakai Makoni and G. And they closed also with a question for us to take home with us uh, for the residencies. And I can read it for you now. And it says, what or who makes you feel uncomfortable? Who were the voices in the past that were difficult for you? And in this moment where people are coming to knowledge, if you look honestly, not in a head space, but in a heart space, think about what felt difficult to receive. So, that is also about um, deep listening, deep learning, deep looking, and um, would be very interesting to do also a session about that, right, with a couple of residencies and see what comes out. Yeah, thank you very much. That's great. Do you have any comments, others, for this? Like, yeah. Uh, so, if you want to say something at any time, please. Um, yeah, maybe I would like to ask Heidi because it's such an interesting question, the role of artists uh, of air and uh, decolonization. And I mean, as I told you, we, we have a beautiful but also very elitist place in the summer residency of the German ambassador in a country where the cultural scene suffers a lot economically and uh, politically. Um, so I would like to ask Heidi if you found answers to those very important questions during your <laughs> seminar. I would be very curious to hear at least some hints. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's indeed a tough one. Uh, but you can think about, um, I, th I don't think there are 
easily answers, but you can think of uh, examples like uh, are artists invited uh, from an other culture and they're from a marginalized group, for example? What is this? Um, maybe there's a notion of exoticism there as well. Uh, how does the artist does the artist sort of suddenly represent a whole nation or what does the artist represent inside of the program? And is the artist okay with that? Is there a dialogue about that between the organizer and the artist? You can also think, but that's completely, again, a different subject. We all know that the Western uh, concept or approach and also the whole infrastructure concerning the art world is super dominant in the whole world. So if you, for example, if you're an artist from Africa, from from Morocco or from another Arab country and you want to apply for residency in Europe or another Western country and you don't speak that same kind of language or use the same kind of wording, it is already, already quite complicated to be accepted in these programs. And is that something that we want? Uh, maybe we have to think about that again. That also means that the plurality or the multiplicity of art, artists and programs actually can be so much bigger and also maybe structured in a different way. Or, you know, these are just a few things to start uh, thinking about. That's wonderful speech. Thank you very much. Yes, that's true, Rekha. We have a time now to think about it. And this is kind of a great opportunity, actually. So. Um, so this uh, session is uh, uh, almost uh, uh, running out of time. If you uh, some have uh, any comments, um, we have a few minutes, or maybe I would like to close this uh, session slowly. Yes, so we had a lot of great op uh, opinion and uh, um, voice, and then there was a hint to go forward. And uh, I hope we can continue this uh, type of gathering, conference, symposium, and then keep going. And uh, yes, I want to go, of course, Istanbul, Paris, Amsterdam, Tsushima, everywhere. I want to feel, I want to meet people. So um, thank you very much today. And I'm going to close this one. Um, and uh, let's keep in touch. Thank you very much for panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. So uh, now uh, we finished all three sessions and uh, uh, we are going to enter to closing session. And from now on, I'm going to speak in Japanese. Um, Hinuma-san wo shoutai shite. From here, I, I will speak Japanese. And observer de arimashita, Hinuma-san to skoshi. So I'd like to invite Ms. Hinuma to talk more about uh, this symposium. Good evening, Ms. Inuma. So thank you very much for your wonderful uh, ment uh, MC. So how do you feel? There are so many types of opinions of voices and so on. In that sense, this symposium is very interesting, I believe. So many words and opinions were bubbling in my head. So I have to reflect the contents of symposiums. There are, there are so many inputs I had. So having said that, I'd like to talk with you in particular. As you know, artist in residence is existed for artists. So this is one of the big or important principles. So what would be important thing for 
air and what can organizers do in that sense we have to think both the things and furthermore so I'd like to uh, hear uh, Ishii-san's comment or opinion to have been served for a long time. So the Heidi Sandra story in the end was very interesting. It was about the decolonization uh, bias and uh, uh, pre a pre stereotype idea. So to uh, get rid of uh, the post-colonial uh, the um, idea of the colonial age. So uh, it is very important uh, to experience. So uh, we have received a lot of seed to uh, raise and brew by thinking about that. And I myself uh, had uh, participated in the many residence program uh, for uh, my writing activities. And uh, I went to, I uh, visited South uh, Korea. At that time, there was uh, uh, the relationship with Japan was uh, different from now. And when I went there, I got surprised to see the reality. And uh, talking about myself, can I? So I graduated from the university and I participated in the residence program and not uh, in, but, uh, entering the graduate school. But the, I was afraid of the art scenes because uh, people uh, in the museum are not so friendly and uh, a lot of um, business mom um may be there uh, this is what i thought but the, the artist uh, who um, took care of me uh, in a very good way said that art scenes are for artists as long as you are an artist and art scenes are for you uh, this uh, word i was trying uh, very impressing to me and uh, in any place uh, any uh, uh, countries if you see an art scene, it is just like you meet a, a long and old friend. And uh, after receiving this uh, word, and, uh, I uh, became not to be afraid of the art scenes and I visited a lot of countries after that. And uh, for example, uh, during the travel, uh, if you, we meet the Japanese people. Sometimes the conversation cannot be established sometimes, but if I met the people participating in the residence or in the art field, we share the same uh, something in common and we could have a good conversation and the one that support those scenes are artists in regions programs which is the hub of the network uh, which is uh, sparse in many places so this uh, comment is from the viewpoint of an artist thank you very much so actually uh, two days ago uh, when we talked uh, with each other, I was impressed uh, by what you said. And this reminded me of something, talking about myself. So that uh, before this work, I worked for uh, International uh, Art Center Aomori, and that was uh, a public uh, sector. And uh, uh, we, I've been engaged in the public uh, based uh, program and uh, a person who uh, played a central role for that is a, is a uh, Goji, Mr. Hamada Goji, who is a lead pioneer of uh, this field. And uh, Germany and Australia, and he had been engaged in the many 
residence in artist in residence as an art. And he uh, was from Aomori. He's from Aomori, and in his hometown, he established and uh, launched the uh, art residence program. So uh, this is something that uh, he paid back uh, to what he had received. And uh, he said to us that uh, uh, he um, asked us to be in the same position. So the uh, creating a place that the uh, artist can be relaxed, uh, which is something that are we are uh, likely to forget. We may focus on the financing or a social impact and big impact and the value to the uh, audience. Sometimes we uh, may focus on those things too much, but we have to go back to the very original uh, point as an organizer. Uh, I uh, that was um, this conference uh, reminded me uh, of that very basic original point. And uh, yesterday we had an opening session. Today we had uh, three sessions. So there are many uh, foundations and organizations who uh, funded us, but. Uh, Instead of money, we are asked to create something. But uh, uh, because uh, they paid some money to us and we are allowed to stay and we have to create something, but it is something that uh, uh, consuming the natural resources. And the I fortunate uh, idea uh, is very new. Uh, the traveling or the moving itself not only uh, traveling, uh, moving, but also uh, seeing people and experiencing itself. Uh, for those, money is paid. So money can be paid, not for creating or making something. So this is the next step, I believe. And then the decarbonization, uh, that was another topic. Uh, we may not need uh, to create so much things. So including that uh, the, in this uh, time period, uh, the corona uh, situation, uh, the, uh, with uh, the experts and the people who are interested in this field, so we can exchange our idea. That is very interesting. And in the session, and uh, the, uh, some artists said is that in this uh, COVID-19 situation, there are good points uh, that it is that we can get, have more time. So the, uh, this, this is a principle of the residence in artists and we uh, provide the uh, place and uh, time to the artist. So we shouldn't uh, uh, expect the um, outcomes or deliverables. Uh, so now uh, that we can uh, communicate uh, on the internet. So deliverables are not yet needed to be created right now, uh, but now we can do an experiment and we can search for uh, the place and uh, programs to match. So we can do a, a kind of a pre-research now uh, to match uh, the artist and the uh, places. And artists have time uh, to think about uh, the places that they are going to to participate in uh, art in residence. Of course, uh, that is not the substitute of the real residence, but the, there is a possibility uh, for the new step of the uh, um, residency. So now uh, we are going into the hybrid um, ages the mobility itself is 
that uh, uh, talking about that uh, the uh, uh, people were free uh, allowed to go abroad freely uh, in 1960s uh, but before that uh, the uh, knowledge uh, only came from reading uh, books so uh, the high speed information exchange has only short uh, history and uh, we are now sometimes suffering from our own uh, prejudice and to get rid of that part uh, we have excessive information in some cases and uh, we are going back to the world of imagination so the information exchanged online uh, may create the uh, impression uh, or the image uh, of uh, some people. So there is a possibility like that. So in the next age period of the hybrid, how we create? So slow down is a key word. I think so too. So, and uh, uh, in the formal session, uh, the, uh, we heard about the, the project uh, in collaboration with uh, businesses, and the uh, uh, business have produced a lot, but uh, the uh, key business uh, even cannot catch up with the speed of the change in the society and the businesses or the companies will go back to the very origin, original state. That was very interesting uh, story. And uh, uh, what we are doing now is, of course, uh, because there is some uh, influence uh, of the COVID-19, we have to protect our lives. And now uh, the mass misinformation is going uh, back and forth uh, right now. So uh, this is because we had focused on only materialistic things and we uh, depended on uh, only speed up but we now have to think about the spiritual aspect. So the uh, body and uh, philosophy. So we shouldn't uh, depend too much on the materials. Uh, by doing so, we have to retrieve ourselves. So this is the time that we have to do that. So this is uh, just uh, what I heard but, uh, a little bit before uh, I heard about the origin of the uh, universities. Uh, it was 11th or 12th uh, centuries in Europe, intellectual uh, people became to be able to uh, work, uh, move and uh, freely in a town so it is uh, related to the freedom of mobility and because of the openness uh, in that point the intellectual uh, were able to meet and exchange their ideas and uh, discuss each other and uh, a student uh, of the intellectual uh, started to uh, hold meetings uh, to uh, increase their knowledge or intellect interaction. That was the origin of the uh, university. But to the local people, to the local people, uh, their activities were uh, strange. And a uh, pope uh, uh, that they asked uh, the uh, Roman pope to authorize uh, what they were doing and they uh, continued uh, their uh, research activities. So uh, the origin of the uh, university uh, came from uh, the uh, freedom of the mobility. And thinking about current universities, uh, the uh, system is well established. 
uh, but uh, uh, thinking about other places to exchange uh, in intellect, intellect, uh, that I think the place should be the artist in residence. Uh, it is very interesting thing. Uh, the nice part about it is the individual experience. That's the principal start point of um, air. And we meet someone, we exchange something there, and we get pleasure out of that. And artists get matured by exchanging ideas. So it's not the case that they just go there on their own. Uh, the people who they meet at a residence uh, is important and they have a lifelong relationship or promise with the people they stayed with in air. Maybe uh, Mr. Ishii, you experienced such things. Yes, I've had so many uh, hellos and goodbyes, but when I first went there, what I saw was totally different from what I was imagining Russia. In Russia, it was very cold. And in Thailand, it was very hot. And in, when I was in Korea, there was a boom of uh, South Korean things in Japan. And when I came back to Japan, they knew more about Korea because of uh, media. And in 2007, I stayed in Iran and America considered Iran as the axis of evil, but life in Iran was just normal back then. Uh, and there's just reality that Iranian people were smiling, eating dinner together with family and they have uh, the government of course was uh, had problems in political issues but when i was there a curator pro made a project of loving tehran and they said why is everyone talking about tehran when nobody's been there or in the same way uh, people who have never been to the US, they still know a lot about American politics. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but I'm talking about the information that's available via media or the internet is a secondary information. And we consider this secondary information as a primary information. And we confuse between the two and we keep um, living in that way so when you first when you get there you experience something for me that's the reality and no matter what they say around me about iran it doesn't matter to me uh, my experience in iran was everything the friendship i had with iranian people what i saw there uh, that's long lasting in my mind and I haven't really chosen my friends according to their nationalities. When I was in South Korea, people uh, told me I'm Japanese and uh, I took part in friendship organization. But I'm not saying that the nationality is the only thing. There are people I like, I dislike, no matter what their nationalities are when I have uh, experienced more of a uh, residence, I came to gather more uh, cosmopolitan uh, ways of thinking. Uh, what's happening in one country is not their own problem, it's our problem as well. So now we now have uh, COVID-19 issues and we all share this uh, problem and difficulty together. And I think that uh, been a good experience for us. I totally agree with your idea. I myself had a project in 2013 after the earthquake of 
2011, there was a big damage due to tsunami in the Tohoku area. I had art in residence project there. My motivation then is to, uh, in all these things that's broadcast all over the world about the uh, victims, um, and we've lost everyone that, about these towns in Tohoku. But I want to show something that's different from what they see. There are lives there, there was some uh, wealth there, uh, there were some memories there. I wanted to uh, broadcast that from the artist's point of view. And that's why I had an air project there. I wanted to uh, welcome artists from all over the world. And they wanted to see uh, the Tohoku area from their point of view. And I wanted artists to create uh, something new uh, together with the local people. Um, and also for artists, that's a good experience, a new experience. And I wanted to cheer up the local people on, on the other. Um, and I've been uh, involved in this project, as Ishii-san just mentioned. Um, the artists have a great ability to take on things. You know, it just, I uh, just totally sympathized with what you said. Thank you. So the residence program resumed. And you know, if there are exchanges that happen, uh, I did visit Tohoku a little bit. Whenever I go there, the uh, disaster became my disaster, not anybody else's. So my going there was just a life lesson and lecture for me. So COVID-19 is, when you think of a different culture, the values are there because those cultures are very different from my own culture. But because of COVID, we have a closed uh, boundaries and we have to compensate with uh, experiences of different cultures locally. And we, you know, can't, we uh, lost track of uh, virtue of having something foreign behind, uh, around us. We, I think the residence program uh, supplies almost for free of charge, that, that kind of experience. You just go to a different place. You get lots of information, lots of wonderful experiences. Yes, that's true. I'm in the operational side and I think of management and in the AI managing right now also is is using the online method and we are continuing with it. It's because we have, you know, international trust or, you know, infrastructure. We can accept artists anytime and we want to keep this pipeline or network with uh, international network so that we are ready to accept more artists in the future. That's why I am continuing the virtual air residence scheme. And I think uh, Manai is also operating with the thought of that behind her. And I don't know how long this situation will last. I can't even foresee. However, in the previous two days, what came to my mind is there are three things. First, I'm repeating myself a little bit. For artists, um, air gives um, experiences and we want to prepare. Uh, we want air to be always there as a safe place for artists to return. And also it's not just safety, 
of、uh, feeling easy. We want to have a challenge. We would like to have maybe a wall or boundary that you have to go over between your own culture and foreign culture. And we'd like to、um, provide that kind of、uh, chance for them. And today you had this forum. Um, from there, I learned about experiences,、uh, agendas,、uh, future ideas. And you provided us with the platform. And we want to、uh, maintain this network in order to exchange such ideas. That's what I came, I was thinking about for the last two days. And you've given me so many seeds for thoughts. And now, Uh, I'd like to get the last comment from、uh, Akira Tatehata. He's going to join us and he's going to give us a closing、um, speech. I'm going to、uh, stop a video right now, but please keep watching us. First,、uh, I must express、uh, our deepest gratitude、uh, to you all, for all of the participants,、uh, uh, all, of the, all of the effort、uh, and fruitful discussion between today's symposium. There are so many reports、uh, about the new role of us in regions and、uh, how to solve the difficult condition under the COVID 19. And,、uh, Uh, uh, from now, I want to speak by Japanese. It's okay. えっと、今日はあの、非常にあの、Today, I learned a lot about the roles of air residents and how we are going to、um, solve the regionality issues about air residents. In air residents, art residents, we used to accept people, provided them with places, and we asked artists to create something. But we've now moved to a new、um, scheme. For example, we provide workshops,、uh, we、uh, establish a relationship. Relationship between artists and industries, or we have a new relationship with、uh, regional communities, and we've discussed so many issues concerning that today. In、uh, Kyoto Arts Center,、uh, we、uh, just celebrated a 20th anniversary after foundation. A young coordinator.、Uh, Made an event called We Age. We Age stands for something we age. Also, we mature like the wine we age. And that's the meaning it has. We wanted artists over 65 to join us, but we know that those people will be、uh, vulnerable against COVID 19. However, the curator thought about a new way,、um, which is uh, to uh, have a performance in one room and audience in the other. So, you, with that, you don't hear applause or、um, their voices. So, we asked.、Uh, Participants to have push buttons, and we wanted them to push those buttons when they feel moved. So, when the speakers saw the lights when the buttons are pushed, <laughs> at the same time, the fan、uh, moved when the buttons were pushed. So, we could see the lights and the fan, and we could you know, feel the、uh, enthusiasm of participants from a separate room. And the speaker, speakers were also、um, were able to concentrate on their speech and feel the enthusiasm. 
And this new online system was, of course, uh, valuable. But at the same time, we would like to have a, a share a real time experiences and physical contact. So we use this hybrid system uh, as a, a part of a solution. This is not limited to COVID-19 cases. I think the online method will continue uh, as a new standard in the future, as a new normal. I think it's going to be transferred. Artists in residence, the new role of artists in residence so after the, the end of COVID-19, I believe that artists in residence will play a very important role. So the relationship with local community or general society, of course, relationship with theater or museum is also important. But uh, the, the, we have to be flexible in terms of operation of residences. So taking this opportunity, under COVID-19, of course, so COVID-19 is like an impediment because they need physical communication or contact but at least uh, we are able to have this kind of symposium online. Now in the world, communication has been expedited thanks to digital tools. Under such a situation, I believe that air in residence will play a bigger and more important role going forward. So i like you to work hard to find out, uh, find out a better way for the future. And to Petrus, uh, Mr. Peter Tips, uh, Petrus from the Embassy of the Kingdom in the Nether uh, Netherlands in Tokyo, as well as with uh, Villa Kujoyama, with, uh, Villa Kamogawa, and Kyoto, uh, Kyoto Art Center. We, thanks to the cooperation uh, among us, we could successfully hold this symposium. And there are many participants or panelists from around the world. I believe that I like to develop such a communication furthermore to create a new era of art and artist in residence. Thank you very much for your cooperation and attendance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Takehata. Uh, now we are going to close this uh, symposium. Air on Air Symposium is initiated by four cultural institutions, Villa Kujoyama, Institut France Japan, the Gate Institute, Villa Kamogawa, Kyoto Art Center, and Embassy of the Netherlands in Japan, uh, with a, I'm, I'm a, in cooperation with the two artists in residence networks, ARJ and Air Network Japan. Thank you very much again for all technical teams and all institution support teams. We had a lot of great opinion and a lot of great things. Uh, I hope we will continue this kind of a symposium and a conference. And thank you very much for uh, audience, every webinar. Uh, for all, all this long day, we, we had a lot of great discussions. I hope we will see soon again. Thank you very much. Bye.